I'm going to look at electronic configuration now and you're just coming in from GCSE so you'll be familiar with something like this so for sodium with its 11 electrons it has an electronic configuration of 2, 8, 1 meaning that two electrons live in the inner first shell and then that's full so we move into the second shell and we put eight electrons into there and that's full now so the eleventh electron goes into the third shell so we have this electronic configuration 281 at A level we use something like this so instead of saying 281 it's 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s1 now it looks very very different but actually there's a lot of similarities we've got this is still the first shell okay so the one there stands for the shell or energy level you might have been told don't worry too much about this s we're going to explain what that means uh, in a bit but there's those two electrons so I'll just grab this one back so these two electrons here there's still those two electrons there okay and this one here represents this first energy level of shell um, this is the second shell or energy level and that's made up of this S so we've got S there and S again so this is made up of S and P okay still second energy level and if you just add up the two and the six we get eight so we've got eight there and the third shell, the final shell, so that's why there's a three there in front of this one. There's one electron in that in that shell. Well, there it is there. Okay. And again, we've got S appearing in all three shells. So hopefully by the end of this little video, you're going to understand um, the connection between these two and what the sort of extra detail is uh, in the A-level representation. The first thing we need to explain is that shells are actually made up of subshells. So I'm just going to show you um, the first four shells. That's all you need to know for for A level. So the first shell contains the S subshell, and that's it. Okay. The second shell is made up of an S subshell and a P subshell. So the second shell has two subshells, S and P. The third shell is made up from three subshells. We have S again, P again, and now we have the D subshell. And the fourth shell as an extra one again so that's got the S subshell a P subshell a D subshell and now an F subshell so what we're going to do now is look at what these subshells actually look like so the next thing to say is that the subshells are actually made up of orbitals. We better say what an orbital is. So there's the definition. It's a region of space in an atom that can hold up to two electrons with opposite spins. So what kind of orbitals can you get? Well you can get S, P, D and F orbitals. We've seen those letters already in the uh, subshell so there's, there's, a, there's a link between the two so hopefully the next layer of this will will explain all of that so we'll start with the simplest of the orbitals and that's an S orbital okay so these have an, a spherical shape okay so uh, there are three dimensional space so we can't say that it's circular we must say that it's spherical 
and so this is a region of space if you think the nucleus is a tiny little dot in the uh, in the center there um, then the s orbital is a region of space around the atom where two electrons can be found and because they have to have opposite spins then we sometimes represent electrons as arrows so if that's one electron there then the other one has to be drawn as a down arrow. If you remember what we said a few minutes ago that the first shell or first energy level is made up from a, an S subshell, the S subshell is simply just an S orbital. The next type of orbital we'll look at is the P orbital. Now this has what we call a lobe shape, so again if we think the nucleus is that tiny dot there in the middle then there's a region of space that has this sort of lobe shape about it and so it's a region of space around the nucleus of an atom where you can find up to two electrons with opposite spins. So again we would show the pair of electrons with opposite spins like that but you know they're not just contained in that lobe there they are constantly spinning around the atom around the nucleus in this region of space with opposite spins now p orbitals don't occur like s orbitals as, as just one orbital they actually occur in threes so what you will see is three p orbitals so if we draw that on the y axis if we draw that p orbital on the x axis so there's one orbital there's the second orbital and then if I try and draw this on a z-axis the p orbitals combine together and this is what we call the subshell so p subshell is just three p orbitals and if you remember the definition this is the orbital and orbitals can only ever hold up to two electrons with their opposite spins. This subshell, because it's made of three p orbitals, can hold two, four, six. So we'll move on now to the, the d orbitals, and you'll see here that we have five d orbitals. There's one, so that's the dyz orbital. So this is still just a region of space around the atom that can hold up to two electrons with opposite spins. Okay, so there's one of them. There's the next d orbital. That's the d x z orbital. And then we've got the the d x y orbital here. And then moving down to here, we've got the d x squared minus y squared orbital. And the final one is the dz squared orbital. Now don't panic, you don't have to know all of these shapes. Um, what you do need to know though is that the five orbitals make up what we call the d subshell. So here's a picture of the f orbitals and the most important thing again to notice from this slide is not the shapes, don't panic, you don't have to know these shapes you only need to know the shapes of the s orbital and the p orbital but you do need to know that there are seven orbitals that make up the subshell so a, an f subshell will be made up of these seven individual orbitals so we can summarize everything now with these next four slides so there's a summary of the first shell. The first shell is made up from the 1s subshell 
and that's all an S subshell is, just an S orbital. How many electrons therefore can we fit into this first shell? Of course it's two. The second shell is made up of um, an S subshell, so because this is the second shell we call that the 2S subshell and that's just made up from an S orbital and it also contains a P subshell and because it's the second shell we call it the 2P subshell and P subshells are made up from three P orbitals so in total how many electrons can go into the second shell? Eight. Now this is where we start um, putting right sort of little um, half truths we'll call them. We won't call them lies, we'll call them half truths that you're told at GCSE. So the third shell is made up from the 3S subshell, the 3P subshell and the 3D subshell. So how many electrons can you fit all together into all of those? I'll just give you a second to add up in your head and hopefully you got the same as me and it's actually 18. So I know some teachers may have told you that you can put two electrons in the first shell and eight in all the rest. Well, I'm afraid that's not true. And the final slide, the fourth shell, well that's what the fourth shell's made up from. It's made up from the 4S subshell, the 4P subshell, the 4D subshell with its 5D orbitals, and the 4F subshell with its 7F orbitals. So how many electrons altogether go into the fourth shell? Did you get 32? Because that is the answer, believe it or not. Hopefully you can see why that is the answer now. So we can put two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second, 18 in the third, and 32 in the fourth.